Good morning, Itamix Kanatani. It is November 27th, 2014. Um, in the moon, itokana koko toi ni it test. When the rivers freeze over. And I am here at Spopikimi, the turtle waters, um, to do a little walk around. As predicted the other day when I, when I uh, came through, uh, we do have snow now. And I, I thought the snow would be returning, and sure enough, uh, it fell yesterday. And yesterday afternoon into the evening. And so it's a relatively fresh snowfall we'll be able to see today. Um, we'll be able to look at things that are going on, animals that are on the move out here in the snow. Um, and we can trust that the tracks that we come across have been made uh, in less than 24 hours. So. That, that'll be a cool part of today's little expedition. Um, first thing, just coming out here that I noticed is that there has been a uh, coyote on the ice. Um, hopefully you can see here, it's hard to see in my viewer, um, in my video viewer here, but there is coyote tracks right on the ice here, um, leading to the edge. And it. I want to note that the edge of the ice here, uh, you can see that the snow has been has been um, thawed, is wet, and so there are openings here where there's water coming up, and uh, that means there's access by beavers and muskrats and stuff still to get out of the water, which I'm sure they deem as a pretty good thing. So anyway, I'm going to take a walk around, see what's new, and um, see if there's any good, you know, trailing to do. And yeah, it's a little bit breezy. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with the uh, sound too badly. Yeah. Oh, right here. It's interesting. Right away here. We've got these little tracks. And they lead into, there's a hole here, into the uh, subnivian zone. Subnivian being the little area below the snow. And let's see if we can figure out what this, this is a mouse. This is, this is not a vole. We, got, we have mice and we have voles here and we have other things, but um, this, is a, this is definitely a mouse track. And, whew. There we got something really interesting here too. Um, this is not a mouse track. This, I suspect, is a weasel. Um, not 100% sure, but I suspect this is a weasel. And there we got the mouse. I don't know if this is a if this is a western jumping mouse or a deer mouse. It comes over this way. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't really see what it is that he was after, what it is that he's eating. But uh, I think it's very interesting here. Again, we got the weasel tracks. All through here. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Okay, here's a hole that whatever this is came out of. Um, could it be that there's a pocket gopher hanging out above the surface? I don't know. I'm still guessing weasel. But yeah, it came out of that hole. Came along here. in here and around in here in the grass I just kind of lose lose track but yeah so already some some pretty interesting tracks um, I do see weasels here once in a while but not very often they, I know they're here but they stay out of view so this is what this part of what the snow is good for is that it can reveal 
um, who's around and who's active in ways that you might not be able to see with your eyes. You might not be here at the right moment to catch the weasel, you know, running out here, but the snow will tell you where he's been. Some nice pools of open water at the Ksiskstakyoyas today. And you can see really that the beavers have been uh, coming out. There's tracks, ice right there. And then if you look at the side of their house, they've obviously been coming up and down that side. Otherwise there would be snow covered there. They might even be hauling some more soil from the bottom of the pond up on there doing some patchwork. So beavers, the beavers are mostly nocturnal. Not likely we're going to see them out here, you know, this time of day. It's pre-noon, but it's not early morning. If we're here like really bright and early, we might catch them. Um, but yeah, pretty cool to... Uh, See that the beavers are still able to get out and about. I've been uh, following a set of, two sets actually, of coyote prints, um, a pair of coyotes. And they came up out of the grass out from the edge of the pond a little ways back there. I think it's probably the same ones that were walking on the ice. Um, I see several things going on out here. First of all, there was at least two people have come through. They're uh, two different, two different shoes, and a larger canine, which obviously is the dog of one or both of these people, has come by. But then we got these other canine prints here that I've been following, and these are coyote prints. Um, and these ones, uh, they go in the opposite direction of where the people went. And like I said, they came up out of the grass over there coming back into the grass here and I can see down this way the uh, head off across the ice so back over to the um, back over to the uh, wetlands so probably um, if I don't run into any other coyote trail as I make my way around here, I might go out onto the wetlands and uh, keep tracking them and see where they go. I wonder if their if their uh, den is out here closer to the river or if it's up on the on the coulee side. There have been occasions when I've tried to track coyotes in the snow in the past. You know, usually when we get a good snow, especially during my winter break, I'll get out right away. You know. If, it's, if it snows, I'll get out at least within 24 hours, hopefully a little sooner, and uh, start looking at what's going on. Because the sooner you can get out in the snow, um, the more fresh the tracks are going to be, the more you're going to learn about like what's going on right now. And so, a um, couple of different times, two, three times, I've tried to uh, tried to track the coyotes. Um, using this, using the snow, using the fresh fallen snow, and try to find their dens, but always they elude me. The coyotes wander pretty far, and they often uh, have converging trails and stuff, where it's like a you know it's like a coyote highway, and so you kind of lose track of whose trail is uh, whose tracks are whose and who's going where, and even in a short amount of time, uh, it can be difficult to find the den using that method, but I, I, I'm not giving up on it. I think it's definitely possible to follow some tracks and find their dens. It just hasn't worked for me. I do know where some coyote dens are, but it's not from following tracks. Um, I'm going to head over this way among the uh, wood piles here on the golf greens because you remember we had a young porcupine kind of living in these, um, in this area that I encountered a little while back and I'm just curious to see whether or not um, he's still around or if he's been coming out in the last 24 hours. I do see here uh, some tracks in the snow. 
I'm pretty sure these are um, not 100% sure but pretty sure they're rabbits but I don't know looking at this track it sure does look like weasels again huh pretty interesting go up in here and disappear into the leaf litter so I wonder there's some mouse tracks on the top of this pole here or this uh, pipe but yeah, I don't know about these. This could be a weasel. They're coming in, and they've got a. Looks like they got a way in to uh, into this shed. Yeah, that's that's not rabbit tracks, huh? If this wasn't such an exposed place, I would put a. Uh, I have a little game. Cam, um, that I can set up for situations where I want to solve a mystery and uh, this would be a good situation. Maybe I can find a similar set of tracks in a more secluded place. Alright, here we have exactly what I was looking for. Um, the trail of the porcupine comes out of the brush here comes down this way and moves over here comes down this way it's very faint but it's there the snow is not that deep is the thing it comes along meets the tree probably goes up the tree but I don't see the porcupine up the tree right now, so um, probably the porcupine's sleeping in whatever kind of um, nook in the wood pile that it has that it's been using as its den. Definitely, definitely, porcupine is still here, right on the same spot, still going up the same tree. Here you can see a branch falling from the tree, and if you look at this branch, you see on the outside of the branch here, the bark has been chewed off. You know, the br branch is supposed to look like that, hey, that green bark. But this has all been chewed off. That's, uh, that's that porcupine. So it has been out here to the tree in the last 24 hours. Um, it's not here now, it's probably back in the brush. side of this tree. Um, it looks to me like, oh there's a couple of them. It looks to me like we got a couple of little yellow rumped warblers. There's one still in this tree. There he is. I think, I think they're yellow rumped warblers but I'm not 100%. I'm going to see if I can get some decent photographs of them to confirm. Yeah, there's one just going up the tree here. Let's see if I can find him. Yeah, I did get some photos um, and I'm pretty sure that those are a couple of uh, yellow rumped warblers but I, uh, I'll be able to confirm um, when I check out my photos and video later. I also hear some uh, 
magpies raising a ruckus back there, so I'm going to go see what they're yelling about because always, always pay attention to the magpies. Yeah, the magpie ruckus has stopped um, about probably halfway to where uh, whatever was going on is was happening. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to pursue it. I don't think so, given that they're, they're not really... Um, continuing to make any alarms. Probably whatever was causing the ruckus is done. Um, I did see a flicker um, headed in the same direction. So flicker is still here. Also I was looking on my camera at the, uh, the, the little birds uh, trying to close in a little bit on my camera just to see and it looks like they got a yellow stripe over their eyebrow um, which means they're probably savannah sparrows rather than yellow rump warblers. Um, again, I'll, I'll actually be able to confirm this when I get home and I'll, you know, write in on the video if whatever, whatever the uh, actual bird might have been. I do normally see um, <coughs> some yellow rump warblers still around as we move into the winter and they're they're the first of the warblers to return, too, uh, after the migration. But they're gone for most of the winter, and it seems, even now it seems late for the yellow rump warblers, and especially late for the savannah sparrows. Um, I'm surprised if that's who they were. If they're savannah sparrows, this is pretty late for them. All right, still keeping an eye on the coyote tracks. Um, they come around through here, and they're really uh, busy right in this area and then they walk along the edge come up at that point there and um, they come up here this way the two of them converge one comes up from there and they head out this way. So, I'm gonna head out in pursuit this direction and see where they lead me. All right, so the coyote tracks have led me to this uh, <coughs> draw here, which goes up the side of the coulee and uh, leads to an area that I know that I call the coyote playground. Um, their den could be anywhere in that draw for sure um, but I don't know that I'm gonna follow them in fact I, I might as well just say I'm not gonna follow them because I've been up that way before and it's really uh, for a human very torturous trying to get through the brush there is so thick um, and so steep but uh, doesn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me to learn that that's where their den is. It's just up in this wooded draw because the area above it, there is a there is kind of a flat bench halfway up the coulee up that way, where uh, that I refer to as the coyote playground. Because I find lots of um, you know their toys up there, you know bones and things like that. Coyotes are not so much different than other dogs. Um, I don't know, you know, it's tempting to go up, see if I can find the den up the draw. I don't know, I don't know. It's a, it's pretty, pretty dense wooded and I'm going to get all scraped up and it's going to be <coughs> fairly miserable. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, so I opted not to pursue the coyotes up into the draw, although I did come across their uh, their exit prints. Um, they're in on the trail right here in front of me now, um, where they had gone. This is probably the route they had taken on their way out to start their uh, hunt of the area, and then the ones that I was following uh, before we're on their way back home. Now, I'd like to go up the draw and find out where they live 
um, but I'm not going to do it today and part of it is just not being in the mood to really um, try to push my way through the thick brush there. The other thing is I left my uh, my little pocket knife, my lock blade, my buck knife in the vehicle and although it's very unlikely I'd be in any danger uh, even coming right up onto their onto their uh, den. Um, oh, here we got some way. All right, all right. Where is he? Shoot. It's an eagle there. <laughs> yes, I was I was saying it's pretty unlikely that I would be attacked by them even coming up up to their den in that draw. However, coyotes are known um, you know in, the, in by Blackfoot people, coyotes are known to be of the wild of the wild dogs they're a little bit more dangerous in some ways um, than some of the others. I mean, wolves might hunt you, yeah, that's true. Um, it's possible that wolves will hunt you. But, um, you know, people have been able to reach into uh, wolf dens and pull out uh, uh, puppies. And same thing with uh, foxes. But coyotes, if you mess around their den and they got a puppy there, they will attack you. So that eagle's on his, he's coming back around. He's kind of hanging out by the bridge. <laughs> he's flying over to the other side of the river. Now he's coming downstream. He's still far away, otherwise I'd try to get him in the viewfinder. Still waiting to get a really good uh, video shot for uh, to show everybody the, the eagles that we have here. Um, if you're out here spending a few hours, you're definitely going to see an eagle. But sometimes you get lucky and you see the nice, uh, classic American, you know, big, mature, bald eagle uh, at a pretty close range. So eventually, one of these days coming out here this winter, we will have that experience. And just leaving some dry meat offerings out here in the owl wood. Magpie's been kind of following me, so I'm sure he'll uh, pick up on them if he hasn't already. And uh, come and grab them. Not much going on here in the owl wood. I did see some deer tracks. Probably there was a white-tailed deer came through. Um, here's the magpie. Where'd he go? He's trying to kind of stay out of view. Even though he's following me. Anyway, leave him a little bit of food there gratitude for all the lessons that they share. I like to bring food out here in the winter for them, meat. Um, I don't always bring dry meat. A lot of times I'll stop and I'll pick up like a, a liver or something like that, toss it out on the ice for them. But just so happens I got a bunch of dry meat that is a little bit old. I'm probably not going to eat it, so I'm going to share it with the, with the magpies. They won't mind at all.
golden eyes. <laughs> Four golden eyes just flew in. I think they were a little bit downstream, but jogger came back past not long ago, so they probably got freaked out by the jogger. My uh, magpie still following me, Even he's trying to like stay out of view and stuff. Been watching him. So yeah, four golden eyes, which I totally expected. Expect to see golden eyes here all winter. Um, but I'm wondering about the kingfisher. Hoping to see the kingfisher and confirm that he's still sticking around. But with so much open water right now on the river, even on the pond, I'd kind of be surprised if, if uh, we see him. I don't know, he could be, could be anywhere right now. The South Pond Spring today, just a uh, one pair of mallards, compared to a few days ago we had six mallards there plus a uh, green wing teal. So we'll see if the teal ever pops back up or not. Kind of surprised to see it here so uh, so late. It's another situation like the savannah sparrows, really. Uh, I totally expect them to be gone by now. Really same absence of uh, mammal activity here in the forest main. Not seeing any footprints of uh, any sort. And actually I would expect to see a lot more um, <coughs> a lot more uh, rodent. Some mice, like the deer mice in here. There's got to be a lot of deer mice in this forest. But they're not crossing the trail. So I don't know. I'm still thinking about trying to find a, somewhere in that area by the uh, by the shed over by the porcupine area where it looks like there's been a um, a weasel hanging out. I'm still thinking about trying to set up my game cam over there, my trail cam somewhere hidden, and see if we can confirm whether that's a weasel or not. So, not sure if I will, but. Still thinking about it. Finally, mouse tracks. <laughs> they just lead straight across the trail into the uh, forest litter from one side to the other, so I don't know what he was after, but at least it kind of like puts my um, mind at, at rest. Now I don't gotta keep wondering, why is there no mouse tracks out here? I just come across some small deer tracks. Probably a small doe or one of this year's fawns even. I noticed magpie activity over here.
got something. <laughs> something he's gonna stash away. I don't know if he's going to actually leave it there or not, but I'm going to go back to this area and look at what maybe he was getting into here. Um, I heard the leaves rustle, so it seemed he was going in under the leaves here to get at something. Might be an inset, something of that sort. Lots of tracks. He had a buddy here when I first showed up, but the buddy saw me and took off. wonder if he actually left it in that nook or not. Still hanging out there. I think it's going to be too high for me to get to. Yeah. Yeah, it's a ways up to get to that point. Whatever he's hidden in there. Yeah, I'd like to know, but I'm not going to go climbing trees, especially trees with no branches to climb. <laughs> if you live in Lethbridge and you're out in the coolies, you might notice you come across these trees that still got their leaves on them. Their leaves got that kind of like sage green color to them. Um, these are Russian olive trees, and what they are is they're trees that um, were used as ornamentals various places in the city, and birds ate the, uh, the olives off of them. Those olives are not very, like, they're not like the olives that we get at the grocery store. They're very kind of a, kind of a dry, almost like a silverberry. Uh, except the silver berries are good. I wouldn't eat the the Russian olives myself. Um, but yeah, the birds birds might take take a berry and drop off its seeds somewhere in the coulee, um, and then next thing you know, you got Russian olive trees growing in uh, the coulee forests. It's not the only, by far, not the only uh, introduced plant that's pretty prevalent down here. For instance, right right here, this uh, this bush right here is a um, Tartarian honeysuckle. Tartarian honeysuckle uh, bush. Again, it's something that is an ornamental. It has really like nice, pretty, shiny red and yellow berries and twins. Um, they're in the summer and so people use them in their lawns and they end up out here um, just looking I think I see I think we got a pair of ravens up this way at least one of them's a raven I can hear him calling I'm guessing both of them are yeah pair of ravens. A lot of times I see the ravens kind of following along the uh, the railroad tracks, you know, looking for animals that have been hit by the trains. 
Um, or at the high level bridge they might chase some of the rock doves, the pigeons that live there and uh, try to get some pigeon. Yeah, we always have ravens here though during the winter. Got a few during the summer too. And, you know, there's always some that stick around all year. But uh, for the most part, what happens is we get crows in the summer and ravens in the winter. And you just end up getting the oddball raven that stays all summer, the oddball crow that stays all winter. But uh, those ones up there were ravens. You can tell the difference by you know, several indicators in appearance, but when they're at that distance, um, just the size of the bird and the call that it's making has that really much more throaty sound than the, uh, than the uh, crow. And living with crows as I do, I know what a crow sounds like. So when I hear a raven, it's pretty distinct. Just back here checking out the mystery area seeing if I want to do a camera placement. I think I do. Um, but look who's out here. A little porcupine. Yeah, I'm just squatting maybe 10 feet away from the little porcupine. It was a little bit concerned when I got this close. You could see it paused there for a minute, but now it's back to eating and doesn't seem concerned about me at all. Porcupine's going home, I think. It's got a stick there she's been working on. Chewing bark. I don't think she's happy that I'm here though. Alright, I've decided to take a little risk just for the one or two nights maybe. Um, I've put my camera right in this hole in the shed where 
it's uh, aimed in the direction out here where there are some of those tracks. There's some some of the tracks of that uh, that I think might be weasel right in there. So hopefully it'll catch something and hopefully um, nobody's gonna see my camera <laughs> and steal it. <laughs> that's the big uh, that's the big issue because the, the camera is pretty expensive. Um, I think this camera runs around about three four hundred bucks this one. <laughs> Um, it's a Bushnell, uh, but it's not really like somebody's passing by. They might notice the shed, but are they really going to notice that there's a camera in there? Maybe. I don't know. Let's hope not. Uh, so I've got it set to take uh, video images of anything that passes by um, and the videos or clips will be 20 seconds long and it'll continue taking those 20 second long videos at intervals of every 20 seconds if there continues to be something around there worth that that's moving around that's uh, worth videotaping just noticing that the uh, water by the beaver lodge here there seems to be every time i've passed this seems to be a little bit of rippling action going on in there and um i imagine that the uh that the pike like to be around that edge of that open area so i think it'd probably be a good place to um try to catch a pike out of, although if you accidentally caught a beaver you'd feel pretty bad, so I wouldn't do it. At least I'd feel bad. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave that camera out here for at least one night. I'll come in the morning on uh, my way to work. I'll stop by and uh, switch out SD cards and um, hopefully we'll, f we'll find out what it is that's hanging out down there by that shed. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to find a, uh, a little weasel of some sort. We've got several different species of weasel here, so I'm curious to find out who it is. Yeah, just about back to the uh, parking area now, and I guess that'll be it for, for me to, for today. Um, changes from my visit of I think it was Monday when I came out here a few days ago. Uh, the only real significant change uh, is that the teal is not here that was here before. Um, but I saw several flickers today. Uh, we saw the ravens, saw the eagle, totally expected. Golden eyes expected. Um, what was unexpected was the little, the little sparrows. And I think those were savannah sparrows, but um, I will confirm when I get home and look at my images and look at the video and all that. Um, so that's different. And it, I, I did note, maybe not the last video, but the video before that it was surprising that there was no little birds around. Usually I see the uh, yellow rump, rump warblers, like I was saying, will come in and they'll eat a lot of the frozen insects. Um, right at the you know in the la in the first winter moon but now we're in the second winter moon most of the migrate migrating birds are gone um, so to have a little uh, savannah sparrows if that's what they are is is uh, surprising but they might be something else I'm gonna take a look at my stuff and, and then I'll have the full story um, of course the snow helped reveal that there is some kind of interesting member of the rodent family living in that shed, in or around that shed, or the pipes that are around there. Um, I suspect it's a weasel or a family of weasels, but um, hopefully, even as early as tomorrow morning, we will know for sure what it is that um, 
or who it is who's staying out there. That'd be a good mystery. Unless, of course, my camera just gets stolen. <laughs> It is November 28th, the morning after. Quite a bit colder out here today. Must be negative 20. There's a wind chill and I'm just freezing. Uh, came out to switch around the SD cards on the camera. Um, hopefully we captured uh, the mystery rodent. I did see over by the uh, shack that there was some indication that a mountain cottonwood rabbit had visited the area so might have the rabbit on there but I'm hoping to have the weasels uh, as well we'll see but yeah just absolutely freezing out here this morning hustling it back to the vehicle got to shoot off to work and uh, wow very very cold